guys, Saf coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video and in today's video I'm going to be doing a Rathalos Blade Master breakdown of the way that you should approach building him for Hydra Clan Boss. I think that is the big ticket area that a lot of people will probably be thinking about using him in, especially in the late to end game. That's where his, his sort of like specialist kit really finds a lot of value for a lot of players. So what I wanted to do is give it a bit of a breakdown of what are the challenges with him in Hydra? What kind of teams can you build? What are the best matchups for the champions and how I have currently got him set up? This will be part one of a video, but I need to wait another 15 potential days because the team that I have planning to use Rathalos in requires Lady Makage and I'm waiting for a window of opportunity to summon her. I was going to summon her during the champion chase, like I'm recording this on Sunday night, uh, the last day of the champion chase. I was going to summon her during the champion chase, but the amount of points I generated to, to just get the champions up and running for the fusion, because I, I actually didn't realize you needed six star ascended versions of both of these champions. Um, as you can see, I'm waiting on the spirit keep reset so I can actually farm some spirit potions. I hadn't realized that. So by the time I'd made the epic champions and then made the legendary champions and then made enough rank foot, like rank five chickens in order to upgrade them, I already completed the champion chase tournament. So I'm waiting on Mikage because Mikage is going to go in a team with Rathalos. But in the meantime, what I wanted to do is go over those different features about how Rathalos specifically works in Hydra some of the challenges we have. So I've changed up my build now. If you see my previous videos on Rathalos, he was built in a clan boss team video and he was built very much without sets in mind. Was, there, was no, there was no ignore defense. There was no sort of reflex analysis. It was literally about how many times can we get him to counterattack and how, many, how much damage can we push in terms of stats. That's what we were really focusing on. It was a, it was a block damage team, so Fury wasn't, wasn't really a consideration. It was very much like how much damage can we get in terms of stats and how much retaliation and counterattack can we do. When you approach Hydra, it's different because in all honesty, you will want to be using A1 a lot more. You might even be using A3 if you can make it work and we'll talk about A3 in a specific second. And even though this does ignore target's defense, you want to be getting back around to it as much as you can. So you will be changing the build up a little bit. Now I have gone six pieces of Merciless to get the 35% ignore defense because my plan long-term is to use his A3 in Hydra. Now, in short term, I can't do that, but in the long term, I can. And I've got one piece of stone skin. I was fortunate enough to get some really good pieces. This is basically after two months of pretty much completing, I would say, I, I, in rotation one, I completed all of the bosses. Rotation two, I've completed near enough 90% of all the places where you can get gear. So this is basically two months worth of merciless grinding and I've been able to be lucky with a lot of different pieces. We've got this five star amulet, which is rolled pretty good for him. He doesn't need accuracy. So all I want is attack. It's a shame that it's five star, but it's as good as I can get at the moment. Then I was lucky enough to get a good reforge of this item and it got it into crit damage and crit rate. That was really good. We have an attack percentage with double crit rate, which is really great. We're using a crazy stone skin boost. This is just the best boots I have on my account at the moment. Speed, crit damage, crit rate, attack, pretty much everything you want. We are absolutely going to need to spend an absolute fortune on dust. This needs to be crit damage. This needs to be speed or attack. This one needs to be crit damage as well. So we're going to have to basically farm the heck out of Sand Devil. We then get a triple roll weapon. Really, really good. No speed though, which is a shame. And we also have triple speed on the helm. This is kind of lucky. Um, you know what I'm like with triple rolling. That's where my luck is. And then we have an attack. So again, this, this needs to be chaos ord, uh, chaos dusted. This needs to be dusted. This is a five star shield. It's about as good as I've got right now. So it does mean I can get him up into a build of 5.9k attack, 263% crit damage. But when we apply the Hydra bonuses, I can get up to about 238 speed, 269% crit damage, 6% ignore defense. He doesn't require accuracy. So it's a very, I would say, pretty strong build considering the difficulties in getting Merciless. Uh, he is booked. Masteries wise, we are sticking with this defense tree because I do want some counterattacking. Um, I don't really need the value of any sort of extensions because I'm not using him as a decreased defense champion. I've got other decreased defense champions for that. So we don't really care about Sniper and Master Hexer, um, which you obviously would in Clan Boss. This is really much what I would think is good for a Hydra fight. Cycle of Violence will proc on his A2 if you get it lined up. So it's worth taking to reduce the cooldowns. So what kind of team and what kind of issues are you going to have? Like the first thing you need to understand is why the A3 will cause you problems because the A3 is going to give him two buffs that potentially nobody else has at the time. Now, increased speed is a very strong possibility you have an AOE increased speed, not so much of a problem, but increased crit damage is one of those buffs that you don't really bring unless it comes as a consequence of another champion's ability. It's not really a buff you go looking for, which means that you're always gonna be in a situation where he has one buff that nobody else has. 
and a lot of people have been going, oh, I can't quite get him to work in Hydra. It's probably because you're using that A3 ability. Now, let me just take you into an example here. We'll run him in Brutal. This is the team I've been running him in at the moment. We've got a, uh, a Necmothar for speed boosting. There's our increased speed, decreased attack. We're using the Archer, of course, because she's absolutely broken. Mithrala is coming in here for stability. Venus is our HP burn champion. And then we've got Ugo for block buffs. So he absolutely needs someone to bring a burner. Burning wise, Venus is probably very good. You potentially could use a Michinaki if you can get lots of A1s going off on the right targets. Uh, you can absolutely use someone like Mordecai, but he's kind of like a low damage option. Tua Messiah would be very good if you can support him and Tua Messiah with her because she can get through Poison Cloud. That does mitigate the need for having a block buffs. That would be very good. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of burners you're going to want to bring with him. It's actually quite difficult. You can bring Teela if you don't have any healing as well. Uh, Teela is a great option for burners. Uh, you can see here you've got Teela. Our attack is also not a terrible option as well, but he will activate those burns. So you're kind of like consuming the burn before you can get around to it. Uh, but I absolutely think probably the best options are going to be someone like a Venus. You could do Venus Cupidus as well. That could be a very interesting team. Um, Sissio is also not a terrible option, but try to keep towards a void burner because you don't want to ever get in a situation where you can't get your burns out because of a weak hit and then you miss your big 200%. That's kind of the problem here. You've got a very big setup where you need HP burn, increase attack, decrease defense, hex. You need all of those out all the time to really realize what Wrath of Loss is good for. So you really want to try and stick to a, you know, a void burner. Someone like a Skrunk or a Mordecai, he can't weak hit, so he's fine. Geomance is not terrible because he's got a single target, can't be, you know, you're not attacking with it, but it is a single target burn. Um, something like a Tua Messias Void as well, really good. Um, but those, what I would, that's what I would try and go towards. Michinaki is not so bad because he is going to hit a lot, so you might be able to get around the affinity issue. So I was just using Venus. This is my like thrown together team. It's not my final team and it's not the team that I plan on using. But you will see in this example here, I'll show you exactly why the A3 is a problem. We start with the Mischief Head. So we can kind of throw out some basic debuffs here. Very straightforward. Put the Hex out. Uh, we've got the Block Buffs here. Great. And then we can do the Nergigante Archer. We could Provoke. I think we have to here. Get that Provoke out over there. And then we throw the Burns out. So we're in a really great situation here. Now, if I use the A3 at this point, now, as you'll see right now, we have four buffs on Necmothar because he's got a blood shield, but everyone else has three buffs. So the moment this goes through, the Mischief Head now is going to pick between two targets. One target now because we've actually outrun the buffs. Even if I do this, he's still going to go for Nergiganti Archer when he takes a turn. Now, he's got block buffs up, so you might be thinking, well, that's not a problem. We've got block buffs up. Well, the problem is you lose 50% of your turn meter and you lose all those buffs. So you'll come into a situation where you're about to do your 200% hits and you're thinking, great, we're ready to go. Mischief Head steals your turn meter and all your attack buffs. And it just ruins your DPS. It's a problem I have with my Whisper team. The amount of times Whisper is either under a decreased attack or gets her buff stolen and loses her turn meter. It's just slowing your damage down. So in reality, what you have to do is not use his A3 unless you can bring someone to mitigate that buff issue. So either someone else has to bring two buffs themselves that nobody else has, or you need to bring an AOE increase crit damage. Now I do have a solution for that, but you'll see here this time if I go through this way and do this and put a burnout and I actually just use this A2, say like we want to take out this wrath head. Great. Now we're even. Now it'll pick randomly. So, you know, Unfortunately, we've got unlucky there. Like she's not meant to actually. She has got resistance. We got super unlucky. Three percent of that. But as long as Rathalos doesn't hit, loses turn meter, it's not so much of a problem, right? You can you can force it. Now in this team, I have made Nergigante Archer the mischief tank. She's going to do increased accuracy, and I have no other increased accuracy, so she'll always have the four buff difference. Um, but yeah, that's what you have to do. You can't use his A3, and if you can't use his A3, you actually lose quite a lot of damage it's actually quite a penalty to his damage. I'd much prefer to use his A3. I know a lot of people have been talking about using his A2 and A1 alternating so you get that A2 big hit, but he does hit super hard with the A2 to make it worthwhile. So I absolutely think um, you want to be able to use his A3 because you're just hurting your damage. Like here now, if I look at how much damage the A3 does, we have everything up, HP burn everything. This is going to do about like seven to 800,000 damage, where the A1 is only going to do about 200,000 damage. So it is worth using. So how do we get around that? Well, you can bring someone with increased crit damage in your team. Now, 
I'm just gonna do a quick look to see how many do I have in my account that can do this. Let's just take out Venus here. So you can see this actually, it's quite a rare one. Uh, we could include the master vault and the reserve vault. It's not a very common buff, that, especially on an AOE set in the Tatsu's gonna go. So we can't really rely on that. He's a selfish one, does it to himself. Unfortunately, there's no like targeting. Um, I'm pretty sure, does he place it? So you could do it with a Masha Led because he's gonna basically apply the same buffs. So a Masha Led could come in and actually solve the problem. He might be a very good option. But you can see it's not very widespread. You know, someone like Lady Quillen could potentially do it, get an increased crit damage and an increased attack with that ability there. So she's not a bad option. But that's what you wanna be mindful of is if you're using his A3 and you don't have an AOE increased crit damage, you're going to be in trouble. Now the best champion, and this is a champion I plan on using to solve this problem, is Lady Mikage. She is the best champion here to solve this problem because she is going to be able to bring increased attack and increased crit damage on a four turn cooldown on an ally attack. It's about as good as it's ever gonna get, but she's also gonna extend the duration of all buffs, extend the duration of all debuffs on the enemy, reduce your debuff duration. It's a bonkers kit and you also get an A1 join attack as well. If you've got someone else with a Shadowkin, really great. So she kind of is probably the best in slot to go alongside Rathalos. So once you've got around that problem, then you just got to build a team around him. So you need the burner. As I said, I think probably Venus, Tua, Messiah or Skrunk are your best options or Mordecai. Uh, you can bring Geomancer if you want. It's just a bit awkward if you can't get his buff spread around a lot. You know, maybe if you bring a HP burn deeper spread, you won't spread necessarily the Geomancer's passive but you will spread the burns. And that's kind of like where you need the burnout because you need that 50% damage bonus. He loses so much without a HP burn. Uh, we're using Nergagante, which is a provoke hexer. That just, that's that kind of that role. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run this through in Brutal. I'm gonna run it through to about 100 boss turns because this team will not die because of the value of Nergagante Archer. And then I'll end it and then we can see how much damage he does. Now I'm just gonna jump in here because I wanna talk about a mistake that I made with Nergagante Archer. I know we're spotlighting here Rathalos, but if you are using the Nergagante Archer, one thing I have come to realize is Master Hexer is actually really bad for Nergagante Archer. I don't know if I mentioned this in my spotlight, I may have done, and I've been very busy lately, so my brain does not necessarily serve me very well. Uh, we're gonna see the AOE here, by the way, massive damage, big damage. So this A3, A2 that Nergagante Archer does, fills the term meter of all allies by 10% if a 30% decreased speed is placed by this skill. Now, when it's booked up, this is gonna happen all the time. But the problem you've got, and this is a mistake I made with Master Hexer, is this goes on for two turns, and it will be on a three turn cooldown. So if you have an extender, for example, if you're using it with Mikage, she's going to extend the duration of debuffs, or you have it with Master Hexer, then potentially with a Mikage and Hexer combo, this could become a four turn duration. Well, when you then reuse this A2 ability, you can't actually place decreased speed because it will only place decreased speed if the duration is longer, which means you lose your turn meter fill. So I would highly recommend people, if you are running Archer, you really want that turn meter fill, don't run Master Hexer because you actually want the situation where you've got one turn duration left, right? That's two turn, one turn, two turn, and we have two, three turn. So realistically, the only she can do at most a 30% fill if we get lucky and we roll Master Hexer on two heads. If not, it's going to be only one 10% turn meter fill. Now, obviously we've got to get back around to this and not having that turn meter boost is a bit of a problem. We should have done an A3 there, but it's not a problem here. Uh, we're just going to cycle back through. We did just use our five hitter from uh, Rathalos, but it's okay because we are able to just do good damage here right now. You can see the kind of damage output we really want to get. It's going to be a 800,000 hit without even having the 200% bonus. Uh, so we can put this back out, get Provoke. She'll never drop the Provoke there. And the thing is, we're using Nekmo as well. So Nekmo Thar is able to place decreased speed. We haven't got decreased speed on this, this, this uh, the head of uh, Poison here, the Blight head. So that would have been a problem. So now we've basically got all the heads dead. There's only one decreased speed out. So in this situation, we'd actually be pretty good because we've kind of got like a lot of decreased speed. If we get a relentless turn here, we could check. We don't, which is really problematic when we want to play test something. But we are in like, this is the best window for Rathalos. This is what you want Rathalos to be in. All the heads are dead. You want to be able to get back to a big hit. In this window is when you want that 200%. And I don't think we're going to get it, but we can try on this head doesn't have burn, but if it, you know, we'll try there. AOE, 500,000 damage, pretty good damage. So now in this situation, we're okay because we've got one, none, none, none. So we should, if we apply, apply this, we don't weak hit, get a bit of boost. There you go. But if we were to apply it without, you won't. So that's just something I wanted to spotlight here when we're in, the, in this uh, sort of halfway through. 
the first 20 turns is actually Master Hexa, really bad choice that I made when I first put it on her. I'm going to have to remaster her to take it away, especially when we introduce Mikage's debuff extension. It's going to get even worse. We're, we don't actually want to lose that speed buff. Now, when whenever the Mischief Head is dead, you can always use the A3. You saw I used it a few times. You can use it when the head is dead. Right now we can't, so we're back to single targeting until we get back around to it. And there's that merciless proc happening as well. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to carry on now. I'm going to run through to the end of the video, uh, and end of the run here. We're going to run for about 100 boss turns, and we can see the damage charts to see how good Rathalos is. Now, we just jump into turn 24 here. This team does not have a Torment solution. So if you are planning on running anything like I've run here, you absolutely absolutely must kill the torment head as soon as it comes out so that that is pretty possible with a very big hit in rathalos he is going to get consumed in a moment which is not ideal but you can see the fear is going to ruin this team quite a lot so we're waiting on that and now i'm going to have to focus on killing this torment head as quickly as i can we have got double cleanse which kind of helps i'm going to hold that because if i get feared again i'm going to need it again um but yeah, that, that's kind of the situation you're, we're in right now is we really need to kill the Torment Head as soon as it comes out because it is the only real, I should have cleansed it, it's the only real um, problem that you're going to face with this particular setup because there is no solution for it in this team. There's no Duchess, there's no Shamiel. Now, if you bring in a solution, you don't have the same stress levels that I have right now in trying to defeat this. Um, but it will affect a lot of your cooldowns. Like, for example, here, we got lucky the fear didn't happen, so we got the cooldowns back Uh but yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really nasty. There's a big hit because we haven't been doing our abilities. I'm going to do that one more time. Um, but hopefully, as long as Rathalos can get a few turns in, you know, and we can get some healing, then we should be able to just one-shot the head very quickly. Uh, Rathalos is negative affinity of this rotation, which really does not help. So we're going to have to go in here. Um, we also missed the block buffs on the, the, the Fury head here, the Wrath head. So... Potentially, we could kill Rathalos if he counterattacks, the Wrath Head or gets provoked. So it's something to keep in mind. Whenever it comes out, you absolutely must, must kill this Torment Head as quickly as you can. Because if you do not, it will eventually be the end of your run. Um, so we'll see how far we get now. So we're fortunate enough to be able to kill this head very quickly. I'm going to A1 there because the splash damage from Hex is probably going to do more damage. The other thing to keep in mind, the passive is based on skill usage. So a fear activation doesn't stop the skill from being used it just means you don't do damage so if you have your 200 percent bonus during a fear proc it will consume the 200 percent bonus so you absolutely should keep that in mind we get the a we kill that torment head get rid of it out of our thing we never want it also have a decreased speed there we can get right back going again so you will it is a very punishing situation to happen if you have that that fear head up and you don't have a solution you don't kill it very quickly you could potentially be losing millions of damage especially if you activate your ability on the 200 percent whilst he's feared there's no solution for that again we've got the mischief head up so we can't use the a3 it's really annoying um but it is what it is so we're at turn 44 so far and we've got to about 35 million damage after getting a torment head on brutal so it's pretty good team. This these these champions are pretty well built, I would say. Um, the Venus is terribly built, thrown together gear. The Nekmothar is in relentless at around about 300 speed. He is built for my Nightmare Hydra team. I'm pretty sure the Ugo is in a terrible build. Mithrala's in her arena team build, so just like high perception, high accuracy. And then Nergigante Archer and the Rathalos is the only ones that I've built specifically for Hydra. So we're about halfway through. I'm going to carry it on through now and go all the way through to the end of the 100 turns like I said. So we are just approaching the turn 100. I haven't really managed to achieve what I like to call the stars align moment where we have all four dead heads, decreased defense, weaken, HP burn on everyone, hex on everyone. We have his 200% moment and it's an AoE. That's the stars align moment. If you can do that, you will do probably 20 million, 15 million damage in one go. We haven't really got that so far. But I think this one is going to be a big hit there. There's a 350,000. That one was a pretty nasty hit. We did get unlucky here. There's a poison cloud on the provoke head. So two turn provoke is very helpful to try and get us back around. But we're not going to kill this poison cloud before um, the cleanse comes in. So that is something to be mindful of um, as well. But the damage is pretty good. It's pretty consistent. This will easily get you top chest. Easily. If you put Rathalos in any Hydra team... As long as you can enable his damage with a burn and increase attack and keep him alive, he will comfortably one key any sort of situation you're doing here um, without any without a question. Now, if you're a Hydra Clash player, you want to push the highest damage, 
then there's a very strong possibility that if you can optimize his builds, that he absolutely can do re really good damage as well along the lines of an Acrisia. Acrisia is just going to be easier to set up because she doesn't require a HP burn. She doesn't require a max HP hit. She doesn't require a HP burn. She doesn't require all these increased attacks, decreased attacks, all these different conditions to make her damage work. But Rathalos has the potential to have a greater ceiling, and that's what it's always going to come down to. Can you actually activate his golden window? Can you get around? Can you build a team to get more of those big hits? I've not had a single one of those sort of stars aligned moments. I've barely been able to get his A2 to do the damage you want when the head is decapitated. Like, this is possibly a big hit. No, 770k. If it's a big hit, it'll be in the in the millions. Um, there's no, there was no even HP burn on there. So that, that's kind of a very good damage sort of perspective there. We did get a cleanser, as I said, it was going to happen. We're at 101 turns. Uh, I did say I would end it here, but let's just see if we can get one more attack off on him to see what he does. One more attack on the A2. There we go. Right, so let me end the battle there. 101, 102 boss turns on Brutal. He's coming out with 30.5 million damage, but a good proportion of that damage is going to be coming from the Hex component here, which is Archer. So I would say at least seven to eight million of the Archer damage is also coming from Blade Master. So he's doing in this turn around about 35 to 36 million damage. Archer's healing by 7.3 million health. That's kind of insane. It always makes me shocked how much Archer can heal. Venus as the burner is doing 13,000 damage, uh, 13 million damage. Mithral is doing 5.6 million damage. Some of Mithral's damage will be poisons. Some of it also will be hex if she is placing the hex and not Archer. So there's a very good possibility like a million of the Mithral damage is also Blade Master. Now this team is very support heavy. It's not very good from a damage perspective because although HP burn is very good damage, it's not actually direct damage. You'd want to bring a burner like a Michinaki or, or a Tumasir that can actually do upfront damage as well. Uh, but it's a pretty good stable team. This is a pretty, you know, pretty accessible team, I would say, apart from two champions, which is Archer and Venus. Nekmothar has been a guaranteed summons in the past. Now, you don't need to run Nekmothar. You can run anyone with an increased speed. I actually think the new Fusion is a pretty good fit here because you've already got a decreased speed. You've already got a Hex and a Provoke with Archer, so you could just substitute that. The Archer is obviously going to be the one that everyone says, oh, well, it's easy if you've got an Archer. I get it. But I, this was just a simple team that I could put in together with champions that I have available to kind of showcase how you would build him, the problems you're going to have with him, and the difficulties in really getting his Stars Align moment. Now, if you are able to bring lots more more damage and increase the amount of times you can kill those heads which is the challenge here because we only really have blade master's damage defeating the heads is taking longer the longer the heads are alive the less time they're decapitated the less damage you're going to do so if you can bring more damage his it's almost like an exponential growth the longer the heads are decapitated the more likely you're going to find the golden window to get all of those multipliers and layer them all in and then absolutely smash it home now some improvements you can do as well you could bring a protection set Mithrala if you have 9 out of 9. That will give him more damage. That will help. If you wanted to as well, you could add in something like a Firol, the new champion. That's a 20% bonus damage when there's 4 buffs on him. So you can layer it further. But this is what I would call a Blade Master doing a standard Blade Master. Where nothing really goes to plan. And what I mean by that is you don't get that big window where you get huge damage. And he's still able to put out pretty good damage. I think this is a really, really, like, I think anyone doing 24 minutes of Hydra on Brutal would be pretty happy with 77 million. It's only going to be your Hydra Clash champ people that are going to go, that's not enough damage, which is totally understandable because this isn't a Hydra Clash team. The only other thing I really want to talk about here is, is it better to go the Ignore Defense or is it just better to go this extra turn? Now, there is a world where I could drop three of the Merciless pieces on my armor and go for Reflex, for Merciless, if I can get another Merciless accessory. And that way you would basically get 30% chance to activate a cooldown reduction, a 40% chance from the Reflex, and because you hit quite hard, there's also a possibility that you could get a cycle. So potentially, if you don't ever use the A3, because of the, the crit damage buff problem, then it might be better for you to go a build which is Reflex and Merciless, and really drill down on trying to get this available all the time. Because it's going to do 100% ignore defense, you might be able to just permanently keep hitting this target. If You won't be able to get Cycle of Violence unless you have the Decapitation Multiplier, 
But if you have double the way that it, you know, if you have a reflex and a merciless, the way that it's going to work is it's going to roll the, re the merciless once for 30%, then it will roll the reflex once at 40%. You're gonna have two rolls at it. They don't stack, they're not combined, it's not 70%. They're two different effects, especially considering one, which is merciless is based on dealing damage and reflex is based on taking a turn. So you'll have two rolls. And then if you want, you could even layer in a cycle of magic. You could also layer in cycle of violence. So you have then a 5% chance that you do it again, and also a chance if you exceed the max HP. So you could absolutely create a world where you have this available nearly all of the time. That might be a better build than trying to go into the ignore defense. It's only valuable to go to the ignore defense if you plan to use the A3, which I do. So that's what I would suggest. But there you go, guys. Blade Master, is he viable in Hydra? Of course he is. He's an absolute monster. If you don't have many Hydra champions, he's probably going to go into your best team. He will get you Nightmare completed so long as you put a supporting crew of a HP burner, an increased attack, and some survivability around him. If you can do that, he will easily get you to a one key on Nightmare, which might be all you care about. You might not care about Clash. You might just want to do it. Can you do it auto? Probably. It's not a problem. The only thing I would be mindful of if you're doing it auto is... If you, if you don't have a solution for that, that crit damage buff, turn it off and go the other build. Those are the two builds I would go. Reflex, Merciless, if you're not using the A3, but I would prefer Merciless fully if you're going to use the A3. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Have you been using Rathalos in Hydra? How has it been going for you? Have you found a new way or a niche way to set him up? He is going to be one of those champions where we will find new ways and new combinations that really like massively improve his damage. He's one of those champions where if you can find the window, the difference between doing lots of damage and doing not a lot of damage is quite big. Players will come away from this video going, how the hell did you get him to do that much damage? I can't do that because it's the nuances of his passive. But let me know in the comments below, how are you finding him at Hydra? Is that the main area you're using him or are you using him in other places? And if you haven't seen my other videos, I've done a clan boss video on him with four different clan boss teams you can do. And I've also done a basics guide, which basically breaks down how you get damage out of wrath loss. Make sure you go check those out. But thanks for watching guys. And as always, if you wanna see more videos on this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, all those YouTube things, but I'll catch you in the next video.